Welcome to the TMRN Time Monk Radio Network. I'm Jules, and today is Saturday, the 10th of September, 2011. Today we have Leonard Lynn Buchanan. Lynn was assigned for over eight years to the U.S. Army Intelligence Unit that utilized controlled remote viewing as a data collection tool. He functioned as a viewer, a COV instructor, and a viewer profile database manager, among other duties. Lynn's websites are lynnbuchanan.com and www.crviewer.com. Hi, Lynn. Welcome to the WebBot Forum Roundtable. Well, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The WebBot Forum administrator and producer of the show is Fox, and he will be doing the recording and technical support of the show. Several members of the forum were kind enough to join us tonight. They include members Disaster Cat, Five Cook, Plain, Sandra, and Diane VG. For listeners, this interview will assume you have a good understanding of Lynn's work, which includes his books available on all good bookstores and his interviews on YouTube. Lynn's websites, again, are lynnbuchanan.com and www.crviewer.com. This interview will be available on YouTube for free on the WebBot Forum channel and at the website webbotforum.com. Lynn, are you all comfortable and ready for the interview, sir? I believe so. Uh huh. Fantastic. The first question we have is from Plain. Uh, Hi, Lynn. I thought it would be a good idea if you could start with a little explanation of the development of um, controlled remote viewing, where it came from and how it was actually used in practice, and then maybe a little bit of how it could be used outside of the military-type world. Quite a bit of explaining there, but... uh, Yes, I know. So the short version, the short version of, like, Stanford and Ingo Swan and... uh, Yeah. Well, actually, what everyone gets is the short version of the history. Um, I think the long version is much more interesting. Uh, Basically, let me go back to the very beginning of it. Uh, Adolf Hitler uh, considered himself Christian and uh, believed in the Bible and um, had read uh, about the account of the Garden of Eden where... um, Uh, Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, and the reason that churches give and all that is because of original sin and everything. Uh, That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says it was lest they eat of the tree of life and live forever. And uh, this is one thing that really uh, piqued the interest of Adolf Hitler. He (laughs) sort of fancied wanting to do that. And so... um, he actually built a um, unit in his military that was called Dr. Grunbaum. Now, that's not the name of a person. That's the name of a unit. And it was studying Hebrew mysticism. The um, Grunbaum means the green tree, and the um, Kabbalah is the green tree of life. And um, anyway, he formed these uh, as a subordinate to this unit, uh, several different things, mind control, propaganda techniques, uh, all of this, and he also had basically mental spine. Well, when uh, World War II ended and uh, Hitler was defeated, the U.S., Great Britain, France, and uh, to an extent uh, Russia started draining off all of the scientific uh, uh, brain pool of uh, of Germany for Russia and I mean for um, uh, nuclear work and for rockets and so uh, nobody really wanted the uh, the mental organization except Russia so they took it and they uh, started using it just like we developed the nuclear and the rocketry they started developing that part of it well about the 60s uh, the U.S. was losing all of its uh, classified information and didn't know how. They couldn't find ground agents or moles or anything. And a man named Pinkovsky defected from Russia who was a part of the Russian, uh, basically, psychic spying effort. And uh, that's when they realized, you know, they had a good life about it, psychic spies, and yet they realized that that's where information was going so they decided, well, 
maybe we had better look into it if for no other reason than to find a way to protect it, uh, protect ourselves from it. And so they started this um, unit. They didn't want to deal with psychics. And so they started this uh, uh, unit that worked with researchers out of California at the um, at a place called SRI, Stanford Research Institute. And uh, they actually started developing a way to get in touch with a person's subconscious mind. Somehow the subconscious mind picks up information from somewhere, and they really didn't care from where. They just wanted to know how to get that information out onto a piece of paper. And so um, Ingo Swan, uh, an artist from New York, was instrumental in developing a method whereby whatever is in the subconscious mind can be constructively and realistically brought out to uh, the conscious mind and written down on a sheet of paper. Now, this controlled remote viewing or um, is the science that was developed. It is a science of the mind. It's more based on martial arts than anything else. And that is its one purpose, is to get information from the subconscious, like I say, out onto a sheet of paper. Now, when this became public back in 95, all of a sudden the newspapers and radios and everybody else said psychic spies and um, psychics everywhere, uh, tarot card readers, uh, crystal ball readers and palm readers and so on, started calling themselves crystal ball remote viewers, palm remote viewers, and so on. And so the term remote viewing came to be the new age term for psychic, when in fact the um, science of controlled remote viewing is a very highly organized um, uh, laboratory-developed step-by-step methodology, which is has only the purpose of getting information from the subconscious out into the conscious mind. And anyway, that's how it came about. It started being used by the military and having great success. Um, The uh, U.S. military unit was stationed at Fort Meade, Maryland, and uh, I was in that unit. Um, I got brought into that unit about 10 years after it started and wound up being the trainer of the unit uh, before my retirement. But um, we had actually the highest accuracy rate of any of the intelligence services, even higher than Spy in the Sky satellites. And um, uh, this is not psychic this is science. This not, uh, we used to say, this is science, not seance. And um, so anyway, when the um, uh, information became public about this unit in 19, late 1995, the unit was supposedly disbanded, and uh, I had retired by then. I retired in 92. And um, so I don't know if it went under another name and just went deeper into security or not. But uh, we did a lot of good, and we got a lot of information that could not be gotten even by ground agents. Um, And so anyway, it became declassified, and as it became declassified, people started looking to it to see if they could use it, businesses, Uh, We do a lot of archaeological work. We do a lot of work for businesses. And we we do a tremendous amount of work for police departments, helping find missing children, helping uh, find missing evidence, and uh, doing drug interdiction. Uh, We did uh, drug interdiction uh, down in Florida, and in one month's time, we were directly responsible for the seizure of $82 million of drugs. Uh, unfortunately, that that's a bare scratch on the surface of the drug trade. But um, uh, it can be used to find information 
that basically can't be found any other way. And so it's now finding its way into medical applications, business applications, uh, archaeology, like I say, um, uh, police work, all kinds of um, ways where people can use information that can't be gotten through Internet or through open source, anything like that. Um, did that uh, cover most of the question you ask? Well, that's the short version, right? Oh, yeah, uh, that is the short version, unfortunately. Um, no, that basically covered it. I think that's a good start to the uh, today's show. Okay, so the first question would be, what are the limitations of our being, and do you believe that any of them can ever be overcome, and how and why? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Um, the limitations of remote viewing, um, let me just constantly separate remote viewing from controlled remote viewing. Uh, they are two different things. Remote viewing is psychic work. Uh, controlled remote viewing is the science that was developed in the military. So let me speak to controlled remote viewing. Uh, the limitations are quite a few. Um, just to enumerate a few, um, numbers and letters um, are very difficult to get. Now, we have found and developed uh, methods for doing that. And yet it takes a highly trained controlled remote viewer to do it. And so uh, we're talking about years of training here. Um, other limitations are that um, you can basically pick up information from the future, but picking up that information and making it available to someone may well change the future. And so you may make yourself wrong in the process of doing it. Um, there are many limitations. Um, can they be overcome? Yeah. Through research, through training, through practice, um, through getting a group of controlled remote viewers working together, databasing our efforts, trying new things, trying experiments and all that. Um, can they be overcome? I believe yes. How and why? Uh, <laughs> If we knew how and why, we would uh, we would already have overcome them. And so, um, basically, uh, all I can say is that we're working on it. Right now, the science of controlled remote viewing is very much in its infancy. I mean, we feel like we're in kindergarten. We know enough now to know that we don't know much, and, um, and we're learning. Uh, there's research still being done by the same researchers who worked at... Uh, Stanford Research, uh, by the ex-military, hopefully by the military itself, and um, we are actually overcoming some of these limitations that have uh, kept us from getting perfect information in the past.